That's illegal. Me lying to women is not illegal. Okay. Having sex with a drunk chick who can't say no to you is illegal. Okay. So say what you want to say with me about me lying to women or whatever. At least it's not against the law. Right. That what you're doing, taking care, taking advantage of somebody why they can't, you know, give a response. You 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 deserve just what you're gonna get, which is a fucking jail cell. That's just stupid. I never did that. That's just absolutely stupid. Okay, let me ask I you this. Oh. He, he wants to know, uh, O'Shea, ask him what did he love about the beta male revolution then? Because I guess you promoted um, the beta male revolution. That, that was a book that you liked. Because you said you re you've read a majority of his books, so you're very familiar with his work. Mm -hmm. What was it about the beta male revolution that you liked? Well, he had the whole... I think most guys kind of know women like to use uh, men for their attention and all this and that bullshit like this. Uh, but what I liked about that book was he had the whole complete breakdown on how women like to use men for their attention like it really opened my eye i think most guys know women like to use put guys into the friend zone but he really broke it down step by mm -hmm. step on how women will use you for your time and your attention and i i, I like the way he broke that down it was a it was a thorough breakdown step by step of how women treat guys that they just want to use for their attention for your attention i think mm -hmm. it was a clever breakdown and, I, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really see – ain't nothing wrong with the mode run approach. But if you apply it, understand that if a woman don't see you as a 9 or a 10, you're going to turn off because it's too aggressive. That's, that's my issue with it. It's too, it's too, so if a woman sees you as a 9 or 10, it's a great approach. But if, if, if she don't see you as a 9 or 10, you're going to turn off because it's like all you want is sex. Mm. So – that might work good for a guy she sees as a nine or a ten, but if she sees you as a six or a seven, and you can fuck a six or a seven. Just go on two or three dates and raise a fucking interest and fuck the shit out of her. Let's say a woman looked at me as a six, okay, six, and I and I come up to her with that approach, I'm gonna turn her off. If she look at me as an eight or a nine, that's that that approach is fine because she looks at me, she's fully attracted to me, but if she looks at me as, as a six. That's a turnoff because women, everything with them is attraction level. Mm -hmm. So the, the point I'm saying is the mold one approach is very effective if she sees you as a nine or a 10 in her mm -hmm. eyes, in her eyes. But what I'm saying is if you use the mold one approach, you're going to be leaving a lot of ass on the table because if a woman sees you as a six and you use that same approach, it's going to be too much too soon. You're going to turn off, in my opinion, my opinion. Shout out ARC, but... The origin of the game, man. How did you come to understand the game the way you do? You, I, I do consider you an expert in the field. Right. Uh, Bro, my, my, my understanding coming from a lot of heartbreak. I, you know, I'm not even going to lie. That's, what the, that's where the knowledge come from. Now, I don't learn a lot of shit from uh, Adam Roger Curry. And, no, why? I don't learn a lot of shit from... Uh, Adam Roger Kerr and no one. Now I know I'm freaking you guys out. Coming with four videos in a row. You know, the last time I did that, four videos, I want to say was early 
to mid-April. Sometime in April, I want to say of last year, was the last time to my memory, unless I'm forgetting the time. Yeah, last time I, I did four videos in a row, four days in a row, I want to say it was April of last year. Yep. I wasn't planning on coming with this video today, but some feedback I got from some followers and listeners and viewers sparked me to come out. Now, I know I always lie to you guys and say, if I tell you it's going to be a 20-minute video, it ends up being a 35-minute video. If I tell you it's going to be a 35-minute video, it ends up being a 55-minute video, and so on and so on. So I think this should be under 30 minutes, but you know me. <laughs> Somebody called me out of my comment section yesterday. You know me. But anyway, there's a few things I want to talk about. It's mainly feedback to one or more of my recent videos, as well as something that I saw in somebody else's comment section. Well, since I mentioned that, we'll start there. Um, a follower of mine alerted me to a video on somebody else's channel that featured me. And there were some things said both complimentary about me and critical about me. And one of the things that was said that was critical about me, and I've heard this before, this ain't the first time I've read this or heard this. Somebody said, the fact of the matter, and I'm slightly paraphrasing, but somebody said, the fact of the matter is, Alan Roger Curry, or ARC, they said, ARC is jealous of uh, AMS, aka Alpha Male Strategies, because he has more Patreon subscribers and he has a better method, <laughs> a better method than ARC. And he's just an overall better dating coach than ARC. Really now? Really now? My question to whoever it is wrote that, if they happen to be listening to this video, Prove it. Prove it. If your proof is simply the fact that he got more Patreon subscribers than me, then that, that's false evidence. Because if I had to use a sports analogy, I'll use two sports analogies. Do you know in many years in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys had the best-selling merchandise? terms of like jerseys and stuff, had the best-selling merchandise, even though a lot of the years they had the best-selling merchandise, not only did they not win the Super Bowl, but they didn't even make the playoffs. So what does that tell you? That, that would be like somebody saying, well, everybody knows uh, the Dallas Cowboys is a better team than the New England Patriots because they sell more merchandise than the New England Patriots do. Actually, they do. Nationwide, the Dallas Cowboys sell more merchandise than the New England Patriots. But would you say the Dallas Cowboys are a better team, particularly in the last like 10 to 15 years, than the New England Patriots? Please. 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 Dallas Cowboys suck. I know I got some, some fans, followers, listeners, viewers who are, if they live in the United States and NFL football fans that Probably love the Cowboys, but the Cowboys suck, man. But yet they they typically almost every year they have the best selling merchandise. What that simply means is a lot of people like the Dallas Cowboys. Don't mean that they're a better team. It's just that certain people like the Dallas Cowboys. Another example related to the same sport, NFL football, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, this past year. Lamar Jackson, the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, he sold, they sold more Lamar Jackson jerseys than they did um, Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. Now, I love Lamar Jackson. I play with him on Madden. Sometimes I play Madden NFL video game. But the fact of the matter is this, man. Lamar Jackson ain't even won a playoff game. 
ain't even want to play not one playoff game. Patrick Mahomes has at least one Super Bowl ring, and Tom Brady got what five? Need I say more? But yet Lamar Jackson has sold more NFL jerseys than either of them two quarterbacks. I want to say both of those quarterbacks almost combined. So if you if you're evaluating the quality of a dating coach by how many YouTube subscribers they have and or by how many Patreon subscribers they have, that's that's a that's that's a false metric. That's an invalid metric. For the simple fact that there's a lot of people who probably follow AMS simply because they just like his personality. They like his personality. But I don't mean factually that he's a better dating coach than me. I mean, I, I'm just going to let my ego come out. I, I would dare anybody to say he's a better dating coach than me. I literally would dare somebody to say he's a better, a better dating coach than me. In what way? Here's the reality, man. I'm going to just lay it out there, and I've laid this out here before, and I'm going to lay it out here again. When it comes to dating advice, and I'll say even more specifically, when it comes to the objective of getting laid, which is what most men, while well, most men follow dating coaches or you know, pay them for consultation sessions and coaching sessions, is ultimately to help them get laid. There is no one great method out there. If there was, whoever created that one great method would be a multi-billionaire. Not even just a multi-millionaire. There would be a multi-billionaire. If there was literally one great method for connecting with women romantically, for romantic purposes, or strictly sexual purposes, that the, the person who came up with that technique or method would be a multi-billionaire. The reality is, I don't care what method you use. You ain't going to get every woman you desire into your bed. And you're never, ever going to be able to prevent or avoid rejection. I guarantee you that. And if you want to challenge me, you know, I'm, I'll am put your money where your mouth is. I'll bet you $50,000 on that. I'll bet you $50,000 on that. It ain't no one method that works for all men. And again, this ain't the first time I've said, I've said this at least a handful of times before. There is no one method that works for all men. Not one. There is not one. I guarantee there is not one. And I'm, I'm including my own method. I'm including my own mo one approach. There is no one method out here that will accomplish these two objectives. Number one, there is no method out here. There is no one method out here that number one is going to guarantee you that 10 out of every 10 women you meet, you will get them in bed. Nine out of every 10 women you meet, you will get them in bed. Or even seven or eight of every 10 women you meet, you're going to get them in bed. Hell, I even say five, five out of every 10 women you meet. There's no, there's no one method out here. There isn't. Because here's the reality, as I said in a recent video. Let's say you're a guy that's five foot five, 350 pounds. You got four teeth in your mouth, and you only take a bath once every seven to 10 days. I don't care what PUA boot camp you go to. I don't care how many books you read. You can read all of my books. You can read all the Alpha Male Strategies books. You can read all of Mr. Lucario's books and whoever else. You're going to have a hard time connecting with women. That's just the reality. If you both, combination of short and obese, short and obese, you got dental problems and you stink. I don't care how many books you read. How many CDs you buy, how many DVDs you buy, you're going to have problems connecting with women. So in that regard, there is, I'm telling you guys, 
There is no one great method out there that's going to help you get 50% or more of the women you meet into bed. There is not. I hate to break that down. Again, that's the reason why you had PUA hate. That's the number one reason why you had that website, message board, and discussion forums called PUA hate. It's because in the early to mid 2000s, even late 2000s, you had a lot of pickup artists that were guaranteeing guys that if they follow their, use their techniques, follow their method, that they would be able to get just about any. Matter of fact, Mystery Method once had a book. And I noticed, I brought this up on a video about three years ago. One time, Mystery, Eric Von Markovic, aka Mystery Method, came out with a book called The Mystery Method. And the subtitle was How to Get Any Beautiful Woman You Meet Into Bed. That was the original subtitle. It was called How to Get Any Woman, Beautiful Woman You Meet Into Bed. And I noticed it on Amazon. I said, that is false advertising. I said, that is false advertising. Sure enough, less than a month later, he changed it. Now it's mystery method, how to get beautiful women in bed. It doesn't say how to get every beautiful woman you meet into bed. It just says how to get beautiful women into bed. Matter of fact, while I'm, on, I'm near my computer, I'm going to look it up. Yeah. See, I'm looking at the title now on Amazon. Now it's called The Mystery Method. How to get beautiful women into bed. But you want to know what the original subtitle was? The original subtitle was The Mystery Method. How to get every beautiful woman you meet into bed. How to get every beautiful woman you meet into bed. And when I saw that, I was like, that is false advertising. And somebody in his camp must have brought that to him and said, hey, man, mystery, you can't get away with this subtitle. Because I remember after I saw it, less than a month later, they changed it to the subtitle it is now, which is simply how to get beautiful women into bed. And to be truthful, I don't even agree with that, even though that's not as misleading as his original subtitle, but I don't even believe that. Man, that's some man. I said this on one of my videos in 2017. Man, that's some man on this earth. They ain't gonna never get no seven, eight, nine, or ten in bed ever. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just gonna tell you straight up. There's some man in this society. I don't know the exact percentage. It could be only five percent of men in society, ten percent, fifteen percent, somewhere in that area. But there's a percentage of men in society, they're never, ever, ever, ever going to get women that on a scale from one to 10 that are sevens, eights, nines, and tens into their bed. I guarantee it. They're never, ever. I'm, uh, with the possible exception of tricking. That would be the only exception is if they trick it. Like they're paying money to either a street prostitute uh, professional call girl or upscale erotic escort. Other than those three options, they ain't gonna never get a seven, eight, nine, or ten in bed. That I'll say for free. Yeah, so not including sex workers for free. I'm talking about for free, just on a combination of their looks, their charm, their overall personality and behavior, their demeanor. There's some percentage of men that they never gonna get a seven, eight, nine, or ten in bed ever. So to me, even that, that but, but, but going back to my original point, man, there is no method out there that's guaranteed to get you every woman you're attracted to into your bed. There isn't. There isn't. So I don't even understand all these arguments about whose method is better. When you're, particularly when the objective is simply getting laid. It's, it's a bullshit debate. It's a bullshit argument. Similar bullshit argument is like, and I covered this in at least two or three videos before. There's some people who believe that indirect, can, when you compare indirect methods of hooking up with women to direct methods of hooking up with women, that indirect, you'll experience far less rejection with indirect than you will with direct. That's not true. And again, I've talked about this a number of times. That, that is not true. 
That is not true. All indirect does is delay rejection. That's all it does. It doesn't eliminate the chance of you getting rejected. It just delays it. That's all it does. It delays it. It delays it. For I give you a simple example. Let's say I go up to a woman named Angela and I say, hey, my name is Alan. You want to exchange orgasms tonight? And she says, no. What? That took me about, what, 30 seconds to get rejected? Now, let's say I'd gone up to that same woman, Angela, and start talking about my favorite movies and my favorite foods and where I went to college. And I start talking about what her favorite movies are, what her favorite foods are, where she went to college. And we spend like 25 minutes talking about a bunch of bullshit. And at the end of that 25 minutes, I say, hey, I want to exchange orgasms with you tonight. I want to be physically intimate with you tonight. You game? And she says, no, no, thank you. Okay. Did me being indirect prevent me from getting rejected? No, it just delayed it. It just delayed it by 25 minutes. It didn't eliminate it. It just delayed it. That's all indirect does, man. When it comes down to nitty gritty, all indirect does, all variations of indirect game, they don't help you prevent rejection or decrease your odds of getting rejected. All it does is it postpones or delays the rejection. If a woman's not interested in you, she's not interested in you. Flat out. If a woman's not interested in you, she's not interested in you. If she doesn't find you physically attractive, she doesn't find you physically attractive. If she doesn't find you sexually appealing, she doesn't find you sexually appealing. In the story. So that's one of the reasons why I've always said, like what I said this, I think, in my one of my recent videos, and I'll say it again even about my own method. I never marketed the Mo One approach as the best method for getting women into bed. I've never done that. And some people have tried to suggest that I have, but I've never done that. I've never said that Mo One is the absolute, without question, best method for getting women in bed. What I have said, if nothing else, is that there's two things I've always said about Mo One in terms of the appeal of my Mo One approach. Number one, Mo One, the Mo One approach, in my strong opinion, is the best approach for quickly clarifying, for quickly clarifying if a woman has the same romantic desires, interests, and attentions as you do, and or the same strictly sexual desires, interests, and intentions as you do. To put another way, when it comes to my five archetypes, which would be reciprocator, rejector, wholesome pretender, erotic hypocrite, manipulative time waster, Mo One is, is the best method for quickly identifying which of those five archetypes you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a reciprocator, if you're dealing with a rejector, if you're dealing with a wholesome pretender, if you're dealing with an erotic hypocrite, or you're dealing with a manipulative time waster. There's no method out there better than Mo One when it comes to quickly clarifying what type of woman you're dealing with and whether or not she has similar desires, interests, and intentions to, as you or very different desires, interests, and intentions than you. That's where Mo One, I would say, ranks number one. Second area, I would say Mo One ranks number one is when it comes to quickly identifying the women who are not interested in dating you or not interested in engaging in casual sex with you but are trying to give you the misleading impression that they are, i.e. manipulative time wasters. Which was what my very last video was about, manipulative time wasters. Out of my five archetypes, really I would say three of my five, I would say Mo One is the best method out there for quickly identifying wholesome pretenders, erotic hypocrites, which are your sexually duplicitous women, and manipulative time wasters, which are your highly manipulative and sometimes materialistic women. When it comes to those three archetypes of women, in my strong opinion, there is no method out there better than my one. None. 
But again, when it comes specifically just to getting laid and or preventing rejection, there is no method out there that's like a magic pill. None. So y'all need to get that out of your head. Secondly, I had a few people write me both in my comment section and more so through email or Facebook. Remember when I first got on um, YouTube, I said I love when I say things in a video that makes people have an aha moment, light bulb on the head moment. Like, aha, damn, I didn't even realize that. One thing I talked about in yesterday's video, talking about different methods, I was, there was a stretch where I mentioned that Speaking of people debating on what method is better, one of my followers had asked a guy, he said, name a method out there that's better than Mo One. And the guy's response was to focus on your purpose, become the best version of yourself, and then just essentially sit back and let women come to you. But I, I made the point that just because a woman approaches you first and initiates a conversation with you first doesn't mean that that automatically means she's interested in either being you being her next long-term boyfriend. And if a damn sure it doesn't mean automatically mean that she looks at you as her next casual sex lover. And what I went on to say is that even when a, pro a woman approaches you first and initiates a conversation with you first, you still got to be more one. It's still recommended that you be more one. I remember, as most of you know, I used to write on, I used to post on this message board and discussion forum called askmen.com. Used to be real popular in the, like the early to mid 2000s. Matter of fact, I would go as far as say, I think for most of the 2000s, I'd say starting with roughly 2000, 2001, all the way up until probably like 2008, 2009, Ask Man was probably the largest. a uh, message board in the world for people to discuss stuff related to dating and relationships. When it came to discussions about dating and relationships on a message board, there were, between roughly 2001 and 2009, I would argue that there was no message board that was more popular than askmen.com. I mean, that message board used to attract over a million visitors a month. Over a million visitors a month. So you can't get much larger than that. Um, but I used to, I quickly became one of the most popular and controversial posters on there. Cause they would keep a track of who had the most popular, who most had the most viewed, the most whose posts had the most views. At one point of the 10 most viewed posts on there. I had like six of them. <laughs> I had like, at one point on Aspen.com, I had six of the most, of the top 10 most viewed posts on there. One of my most controversial posts was called Why Innocent Flirting is Bullshit. Why Innocent Flirting is Bullshit. I wrote a similar article, I want to say, on the a, on a Negro Manosphere. O'Shea Duke Jackson cited the Negro Manosphere. I wrote an article about innocent flirting. And see, this relates to what I'm talking about. I can name a lot of times in my life, starting with my high school days, definitely my college days, all the way up until my, probably my 40s. I can name a lot of times where I was, I'd say, a nightclub or party, and I would have a woman fall practical birth, start flirting with me, and I would think, I would mistake that for meaning that, you know, she wanted to give me some pussy, only to find out that she didn't. Even though she would have, the woman had approached me first, she had initiated conversation with me first. She would even say things like, um, oh, you're very handsome or you're very sexy. But when I would become on one with them, they would be like, uh, no, I got a boyfriend. I give you the best example. The easiest example of this would be uh, a strip club. Go to any strip club. If you go to a strip club, just about all the strippers in the strip club, they're going to approach you first. They ain't going to wait for you to approach them. 90 to 99% of the time when you're at a strip club, the strippers 
are going to approach you first. And they're going to try to motivate you to pay them money for a lap dance. But just the fact that they approach you first, does that mean they're going to suck your dick? In most cases, no. Does that mean they're going to give you some pussy? In 99% of cases, no. Unless you go be, unless they both a prostitute and a stripper. They just want that money from you. They want that money from you. Women will make the first move on men if they want money from them and or just flattering, entertaining, and emotionally empathetic attention. I had that happen quite a bit when I was in college. Women would make the first move on me, but at least half the women who, who started conversations with me, they never ended up giving me no pussy because they were basically innocent flirts, what we would now call either tension whores or cock teasers. Tension whores, that's what the tension whores and cock teasers are. They're both innocent flirts. So you guys got it mixed up if you think, yeah. And that's the, the main point that I was trying to make is that even with my variation of mode one that I call mode zero, which is when a woman approaches you first and initiates a conversation with you first, you still got to be mode one. <laughs> you still got to be mode one. And that was an aha moment for a lot of guys. A lot of guys wrote me and said they didn't realize that. They was like, damn. That's a good point, Alan. I didn't realize that. You're right. When I think about it, you're right. Yeah. I mean, if a woman, if you're at a house party and say you're sitting on the couch and a woman comes up and sits next to you and says, hey, are you enjoying this party? And you say, I sure am. And then she's like, how do you know the host of this party? And you say, oh, Linda? Oh, I've known her since college. And then let's say you guys go on to have like a 30-minute conversation about a bunch of bullshit. And then she, at the end of the conversation, she says, hey, what was your name again? You say, Brian. She says, Brian, it was nice meeting you. What did you accomplish? If, if, that, if, if it went down like that, what did, what did Brian accomplish? He didn't accomplish shit. Even though she was the one who came and sat next to him on the couch, she initiated the conversation. But because he, he, he basically engaged in a bunch of Mold two, mold three type of bullshit conversation. It didn't accomplish anything. So just because a woman initiates a conversation with you does not excuse the fact that you still don't need to be like a lot of guys have this mistaken impression that you don't why you don't need to be mold one if the woman gives you choosing signals and she comes to you. Now, now if you're talking about a woman approaching you. Looking you dead in your eyes and saying, damn, you handsome. Damn, you sexy. I want you to come home with me tonight and fuck me like I ain't never been fucked before. Then obviously, you don't need to be more one with a woman like that. Because she, because she's being more one hardcore with you. <laughs> she's being more one hardcore with you. So why would you need to be more one with her? That's kind of like, if most people know my backstory with my fiance, that's kind of sort of what happened with my fiance. My fiance was more one with me. I didn't have to be mold because somebody just asked me that yesterday. They said, Alan, which variation of mold one did you use to hook up with your fiance? I said, I said, our hookup was of the mold zero variety. Yeah, my fiance actually made the first move with me. She came out and told me first, basically, I find you attractive and I would love, you know, to connect with you. And you say the rest is history. But yeah, she was more one with me. Um, so yeah, if a woman is more one or more one hardcore or more 1.5 with you, then obviously in that situation, yeah, you're right. You don't have to do anything. But I'm talking about a situation where a woman approaches you, initiates a conversation with you, and then she just proceeds to engage in some flattering and or entertaining small talk and fluff talk and chit chat. See, then you still got to be more one. Otherwise, she's going to waste your motherfucking time, especially if she's an attention whore, a cock teaser, an innocent flirt, or some other variation of a manipulative time waster. You're going to have your time wasted. Keep that in mind, fellas. So, again, my bottom line is simply this, man. Based on some of the debates and discussions I saw, 
and comments and other people's comment section and whatnot. It's just like the diet industry. I compare dating advice industry to the diet industry. There's no one diet you can say is the absolute, excuse me, best diet out there. It depends on what your personal preferences are. Some people prefer low fat diets. Some people prefer low carbohydrate diets. Some people prefer liquid diets. Just some people prefer just overall low calorie diets. Some people prefer just the fruit, fruit and vegetable diet, vegetarian diet, and so on and so on. There's a bunch of different diets for everybody's personal preferences. And I would say, generally speaking, the same with uh, dating advice. I remember when I first started being my one, my brother used to tell people, he used to tell people, Mo One ain't for everybody. I did a video, I think in 2018, where I said that. He said, Mo One is not for everybody. And that's why I would never say Mo One is the method for all single heterosexual men. No, it's not. Some men will never have what it takes to be Mo One. Again, like related to what I said yesterday, man, you got to have balls and backbone to be Mo One, man. Some guys aren't just, aren't, plain and simply, are just not built like that, man. Sometimes it's just not built like that, man. For some guys, if you're a guy that's sensitive to rejection and sensitive to criticisms, insults, and negative reactions from women, then you probably are better off uh, being indirect, which is what Alpha Male Strategies promotes. He promotes like going on three dates and all that indirect stuff. He's totally against direct, as, again, as evidenced by his chapter 65 in his new book, where he says, I am against the direct approach. He's all about the indirect approach. You can't compare an indirect co coach to a direct coach. You can't. You, I don't even know why people try to compare those two methods. People who are dating coaches of indirect game, they're going to be teaching stuff that's totally different from a dating coach who teaches direct game. So that's why I said on a recent video, a lot of people look at me and AMS as kind of like direct competitors of each other, but really we're not for the simple fact, no other reason for the simple fact that he's an indirect dating coach, man. He's about indirect verbal game. Again, he, he read his books. It tells you. He's about going out on like as many as three dates just to score a casual sex with a woman. I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe in going on, on even one date with a woman if you're just looking to get that woman to be your fuck buddy. I don't go on dates for, for fuck buddies. Women who I look at as a potential girlfriend, yeah, I'll take them out on a date. But if I look at a woman as just a casual sex lover, a fuck buddy, I don't take no woman out on no date. Fuck no. Never ever. Fuck that. They ain't getting no free meal off of me. All they gonna get is some good dick. And that's all they got. Ever. Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are. The vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Alan Roger Curry, the king. The king. The king. Um, I have to agree with you on the communication piece, because I actually did take a session with uh, Alan Roger Curry, 
And he gave me a line mm-hmm. that, I, that I did not think was going to work. And it worked. And I was like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God. Guys, man, he's the master. He's the master of the verbal yeah. seduction. He got that communication yeah. piece down pat. It really worked. Yeah. It was complete. It, was, it just simply worked, and I just didn't think it was going to work at all. Verbal seduction, <laughs> man. I'm like, clearly, this guy's the Michael Jordan of seduction. Like, you know, come on now. <laughs> 